Hey there, this is the third video in my Intermediate Minesweeper strategy series. And uh, in this one, I'm going to do a brief follow-up uh, to the second one, which I will have a link to, that talked about uh, extending the basic patterns we learned in the beginning uh, strategy series to two dimensions uh, or um, not just up against a wall. And uh, I just wanted to make clear that one of the patterns uh, is even cooler than I made it out to be. Uh, and then we're going to talk about uh, an interesting situation where you have the same number on opposite sides of a wall and what that can tell you. So let's go. Great. So in the last video, I talked about how our classic one to one pattern can be extended into two dimensions. But in the example I used, um, because I was still thinking in the one one and two two pattern mold, you uh, for which the one one and two two patterns, you still need to be on an edge, just like in one dimension for those patterns to work in the two dimension scenario. But the one to one pattern is not limited to the edge. I showed you a situation where it was on an edge. There was a one right on the edge and then a two next to it and then a one again. And it worked great, but it works even better when it's in the middle of a board. So here again, we have a one to one pattern and an extraneous one that I found while guessing, but just focus on these three, the one to one pattern. And uh, again, the logic is similar to one dimension, where if this were the wall and all this were open sky, then you would be able to mark those two as mines and open up that one, that one, and that one. So that was in one dimension. It's trickier in two dimensions because uh, we don't know exactly where these mines are, but if you think about this two and these four squares here, it turns out that one and only one of them can be a mine because of that blue one. If two of these four were mines, then that blue one would be touching two, not okay. And if none of these four were mines, and say it was these two, then not only would this one not be touching any, because that two already touching two would mean that all four of these covered squares can't be mines, and so that one uh, would not be, oh, I'm an idiot. The one could still be touching one over here. Never mind. The point is, <laughs> one of these has to be because if none of those were, this one could still be okay. Like that could still be a mine, but this one here would now be touching two. And that's the problem. So, sorry, long story short, one and only one of these four mines, four squares can be a mine. And using the same logic going the other direction, one and only one of these four mines, uh, squares can be a mine. So just like in one dimension, you will know then that one of these two is going to be a mine and one of these two is going to be a mine. That means that each of these ones are already touching their one mine that they're allowed to touch. It's gonna to be one of these two for that one and one of these two for that one. And again, we don't know which, but because this one is touching a mine here, that means that these five squares are all available to open, which is awesome. So great, uh, you're on a roll. And that was sort of the uh, pattern I showed you last time where there was the edge. Just remember that when it's in the middle of a board, it still works, same thing, except this one is touching uh, its one mine between these two somewhere. And obviously that means you can open these two squares, but you already did. But now you can also open these three. Remember, this one isn't necessarily always open. Uh, I just happened to find a one, one, two, one pattern when I was looking. Uh, so if that wasn't already open, you could open it. And here we can definitely open those two as well. So when you have a one, two, one pattern in the middle of a board like this, this is the result that it looks like. You don't know which of these two is a mine, and you don't know which of these two is a mine, but you know that one of those two is, and one of those two is, which means that these three are not, these two are not, you already had that one uncovered, and these three are not either. So you get to open, I think that's eight squares. So that's pretty cool when you have a one-to-one -one pattern in the middle of a board. It's not limited to just an edge. But let's move on to that uh, opposite sides of a wall having uh, the same number uh, mirrored on each side. Okay, this is a pattern that 
at least as I quickly think about it, I haven't been super um, systematic about this specific pattern, but I believe it only generally works for ones and twos, um, although they can often be disguised as we talked about in the first video in this intermediate strategy series. But the idea here is that if you have a wall like this, Again, ignore all the stuff we can be doing about, oh, we have a 2-2 two -two pattern here and a 1 on a corner, you know, we can mark a lot of stuff. Here we are learning, and we have this 1 here on the side of a wall, and just looking at that 1, uh, you could, you know, see, oh, it's a 1-2 pattern, so that one's going to be a mine, and that one won't be, but you can't do too much more. But if you have this 1 along a wall, and there's a 1 opposite it on the other side of the wall, turns out you can open these five squares all on the other side of the wall that are touching this one just because it's mirrored here think about it it's not that complicated one of these is going to be a mine because those are the only three covered squares that this one is touching and since this one is also touching those same three covered squares then it's got the only mine it can be touching in there so these five squares that it's also touching that are covered and we don't know what's in them we do know that a mine is not in any of them so uh, obviously it opened a bunch there but might have had to just do one at a time we got all five of these for sure we're safe so you know you could be doing the two twos and stuff down here but if you see a one along a wall and a one uh, just on the other side of it uh, in a sea of covered squares that you don't know what they are, maybe, you know, you were just guessing around in places and uh, there happened to be that one there, uh, you can just immediately know, oh, there's a whole bunch here I can open. That opens up a wide space for me. Uh, it turns out it's very similar with twos, and I'll show you that real quick, but it's basically the same thing. All right, and here we have the same idea. This two is along a wall here, and there's another two mirrored uh, across from it on the other side of the wall. Now, again, uh, one of the very most basic patterns we saw where you don't even need to look at other numbered squares is a three against a wall. That's a classic, just all three of those are gonna be mines. You can mark them real quick, but um, pretend that's a two or something that we don't know uh, so quickly what's happening here. Um, if you just happen to see, oh, here's a two along a wall and here's a two mirrored on the other side of it, then same thing with the ones. Two out of these three are going to be mines. Uh, pretend we don't know which two, although because of that three, we know it's those two exactly. But anyway, two out of these three are certainly going to be mines. This two is touching those same three covered squares, two of which are mines. And so these five squares that the two is touching on the other side of the wall cannot be mines. You can go ahead and open all five of them. Hey, what do you know? It was these two that were the mines. Um, so not that complicated of an idea, but it actually can save you a lot of time if you see that specific pattern. So that's the end of that video. Hope that was clear enough. Um, let me know if not. Uh, let me know what questions you have or um, issues you're having solving, and I hope you're doing great.